two. Welcome back to Team Fat Kid Choose a Fat. I am Jason. This is Alex. This is Dennis. This is Dooley. My bad, Dooley. I was already cutting you off. <laughs> Cut off number one. one. Uh, Within the first five <laughs> seconds. I don't know. That's a, record. 26, that's a new record. 26, 27 seconds in? Yeah, all right. No, that's a record. I okay, so this podcast isn't even ours. This podcast brought to you by Screw Dooley. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Dooley. So, we, so we're, we're, we're did, did you hit the shots fired? Like, I see you hovering. I'm just not sure if you hit it or not. Yeah, he hit it. He did. Yes, he did. I'm almost proud. Almost. <laughs> right, so uh, today's not even our podcast. We are doing a podcast called Lunch with Biggie. And as soon as he calls us into his podcast, we're going to record a podcast inside of a podcast and see how the fuck that works. Inception. That's right. And it's uh, Lunch with Biggie is by Daily Fresh Threads, the yes. same gentleman. Uh, obviously, Biggie. E- Fresh. Episode one, season one, Team Fat Kid Choose the Fat. It's going to be awesome. So, all right. So, as soon as we get on the line with him, we'll be, be right, right back. back. Which is two seconds to you. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Lunch with Biggie, a podcast about small business and creatives sharing their stories and hopefully inspiring you to do your own passion. Today, I want to talk to you guys about these three guys that I met. And ironically, the beauty of social media. Um, I met these guys online because of the fact that, that they were following their passion. Um, and as like, they continue to grow, they basically grew at everything from, and we'll be hearing more about them, but everything from their passion to a podcast to actually doing a business. What I'm talking about is every single person has a little fat kid inside of them. I know I do. My name's Biggie. Um, and these guys definitely exemplify it, and they want me you to have a cheat day every day. And that's my boys and my friends. Team Fat Kid. Um, thank you guys so much for coming on the show, and uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having us. Dude, it is our pleasure, of thank course. You. We've obviously had a good time with you uh, in the past. Yeah, like on, on our podcast, but now like I'm super excited that you're launching your own podcast, and it gives us an opportunity to explore what you want to talk about. Yeah, and I, I definitely appreciate that, and one of the big things that I do also appreciate is the fact that you guys actually said you wanted to be my first guest, so I, I kind of thought that was it was only it was only appropriate that you guys were my first guest for this one as well. So oh, we're definitely um, thank happy you about guys. that. I mean, big, <laughs> Biggie, Team Fat Kid, you, you know, like the whole everything kind of just runs like it's 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 a perfect marriage. Yeah, that's definitely dream case scenario. Um, <laughs> one of the so one of the big reasons, like I said, is the the big reason why I really wanted to have also you have you guys on the show was because. Um, I'm, I'm a, I absolutely love people that are passionate about things. And one of the things that I love when I'm on your show is the fact that you guys are passionate about food, just like I am. Um, and so I really would love for you guys to share your story, um, about how you started with your passion from the concept of food, your food, your food passion, and then kind of how it's progressed. I, before he jumps into this, I know he wants to answer this question. No, but like it's, it's before, a really long before story. He jumps into this. <laughs> I'm going to try and cut it down a little bit. You had three steps that you mentioned. Passion, yeah. something, and then business. What was the middle one? Passion, podcast. And then business. Cause, so, and go, then business. Because technically just, that's kind of how it went, right? Is Am I wrong or correct me? No, you're... you're ah, man, it's a, there's it's multiple a, businesses there's, involved. There's, so, there's layers. It's like an case, onion. I, it's like an ogre. Limited to that. <laughs> Passion, podcast, business. I Hopefully will. that will shorten his story. Okay, so like, come on, man. It's our, it's all of our story. Uh, so it all started like it, it all started with a uh, basically a backyard grilling, backyard expedition. grilling, hanging out. Like you know, it was our day off, and we like you know instead of cooking for other people, it's like what did we want to do? It was it was chefs cooking with yeah. chefs for chefs. Like, let's just let's see how far we can take something, and how far we can twist it, and how far we can push an, an envelope, and so. It began that way, but then, you know, like, things take a long time to cook. And, like, especially, like, because, like, we love smoking things and, like, putting them on a rotisserie or an asado spit or something along that line, and those take hours. And then it was actually Dooley. You can say hello, Dooley. You're allowed to speak. Hello. Uh, (laughs) It's a... he he's the one who said we should do a podcast because we would just hang out. He also said it was free. Yeah, he also did say it was free. to clarify that. Uh, plead the fifth. <laughs> and so, like, our, our, okay, our podcast spun way out of control. Like, we built a table and everything. But, like, the, it was just a bunch of guys hanging out, cooking food, like, while we were waiting for things to happen. And we were just, we were sitting around a table laughing so much. He was like, Dooley was like, we should really record this. It, because we, we think we're funny. 
<laughs> so we assume everyone else thinks we're funny. The most said phrase that we always say is like, why is no one recording this? And then it's just... Ironic that we record a lot, but it always happens. <laughs> <laughs> and, then... and so to, to hold on, just to clarify, because me being a horrible host, Team Fat Kid is comprised of three people. There's no. Jason... No, there's more than three. Well, oh. it's it's a tell team. Me, tell it's, me, it's a tell team. me, Team I mean, Fat Kid. Tell, Biggie, tell I, me, because do you don't consider yourself part of Team Fat Kid, Biggie? I well, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, you've been on well, then there you go. At we're at least twice. We're already past three members, right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's four people at the table right now, but uh, I would say that Team Fat Kid that went on TV oh, was don't... three people. Um, the core group that has been together for a long time has been mainly comprised of three people but it, i mean again it's a team there's there's a lot of people involved there, here there's people that um, slide in and slide out of the team of course. like you know of, of course people that got real it, lives yeah real jobs you know, yeah because <laughs> we running a food truck is not a real job we usually hang out either on sundays or mondays it used to be sundays now it's more team fat kid monday and how many people have mondays off you know if you got a regular job you can't be here all the time so okay but uh, in the industry in our industry mondays, mondays are, usually, are usually a day where everyone's off so, oh, okay. Can you let? Yes. Can you can you let Chase in? Yeah, another uh, member of Team Fat Kid just arrived. <laughs> so again, it's a team. It's growing. Uh, but the the main members that cooked on the truck, especially in the show, yes, there were three. It's yep. myself, Jason, and Dooley. Um, but you yep. cannot leave out the butcher. Wait, he's at the table right now. Dennis, I said Dennis, I said who cooked on up? the truck on the show. That's, yeah. Yeah. Dennis, yeah. Dennis the butcher, like he he was always our butcher, and then he just like. Incorporated, yeah, like, 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 we, we absorbed him. He was like, Hey, man, I want to come on the podcast and like come hang out and cook food. And then now he's like a couch, like, he, pretty much, like, he moved in and like you put him there and he never left. And, like, <laughs> and, it's, <laughs> and it's good that we have him because we forget everything. And yeah, he he stats. <laughs> yeah, he keeps track of all of our stats and he can remember all that. And like, we're like, What, what, like, he can remember what we did three years ago. Mm-hmm. All right, That's so. Crazy. Passion, so, passion okay, to podcast. So the, the passion which led to the podcast. Now, there's one thing that you're right. It did, I, and I didn't include it, which you brought it up, um, Alex. So I want you to kind of touch on that as well, because that's actually I was following you guys when you guys were doing you like just you know inst- social media and then doing your podcast. But then you guys basically, you know, a great opportunity showed up, which was what. Uh, so we. Started a food truck. Well, he's talking about the great food truck race. You know, I'll go either way. Yeah. Uh, so let's start there. Like, so we went on the Food Network's the great food truck race, and it was the three of us: uh, Dooley, Alex, and myself. Um, and we had a great experience with that. And it was something that we wanted to do. And it was like I guess like happenstance that. W- we were selected to go and have that experience and like learn what it's like to operate a food truck. Uh, I'll put that in quotes because there's a lot more that involved into it. Like uh, when you're not doing it for TV and there's a lot less like, involved. Yeah, involved like if you take the TV aspect out of it. Um, could yeah. you, I can only imagine the labor on a TV show. Right? Yeah. If you were paying to... In, Anyway, but so like once we did that show, we when we came back, we knew that that was like this is what we're going to do now. Like we did the show. I mean, like, all right, how do we how do we figure this out to to launch this business and to make it a reality? And a, a lot of it came from like people watching like our our videos like on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and stuff like that. And like, oh, where can I get this? And like, oh, we don't have a storefront. You know, and it, yeah. like that was kind of like our drive to launch the food truck. Like now, all the things you see us do, like the crazy, like obviously, you know, we're not going to make you a meat cake on a food truck. Well, but if yeah. you Look, call, if you call try. us, no, you, I'll take that back. If you, yeah, <laughs> we cater. Cater. you want, th- we'll make it happen. It's just going to be expensive. I mean, <laughs> we cater. Huh? So just to give just to give some background, because obviously, like you said, you're all chefs. So t- was it one of those things where you guys all worked um, different places and then just kind of said, you know what? I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit my, what I'm doing to actually pursue this. Like, I mean, that's, that's a huge, that's a huge, uh, you know, huge in my world, I guess, kind of looking at it, sometimes it could be a huge gamble. So what made you guys kind of take that, you know, take that step to say, you know what, 
screw it. I'm, I want to do this. We're going to go do the truck and we're going to make this happen. All right. So I think there's a couple of things that were involved in that. Uh, first off, um, when we finally got the truck registered and updated uh, due to situations ongoing, um, it took longer than expected to get everything licensed and registered and ready to go. But when we were finally up and running, um, I believe I'm the only one that like full on quit my job. Um, yeah, right and away. in in the beach, like right away, instantly yes. was like, all right, truck is up. It, I'm like I'm out. two feet in, like cannonball. Um, like, <laughs> I did, I did kind of have like a fallback because uh, I was working for my old company like two days a week, um, and I was like, I'll help you out when I can. If I'm if I'm busy, I'm busy. But uh, you know, um, but ironically enough, uh, again, ongoing situations. Uh, yeah, uh, basically relieved him of, of yeah, his job. Yeah, it relieved me of my job because <laughs> um, with like you know, with, as we started getting busier, as, as we started, we got busier, more free. As we started getting busier, uh, I was a food and beverage director, um, and there's no real like you know like I worked in a huge. There's no 200-person banquets going on. You know, so it yeah. was, they, they let me go, and that's when I was like, well... It kind of worked out for Well, her. Alex, guess what? We're going to book the hell out of this truck, because now we both need money. <laughs> it, was, it was honestly a little scary, though. Yeah, um, I mean, it was very scary in the beginning, and I'm not going to say it's not scary now. No, uh, we... I'm up- comfortable in our decision making uh, or decisions made for us uh. <laughs> I will say the food truck aspect in particular we debated back and forth for probably like a year and a half yeah. um, going on the show um, definitely made a huge difference in, in our decision and again with ongoing situations it probably turned out better because I don't think a brick and mortar restaurant would have been the right way to go right now and honestly yeah. with like going on the show it let us know like how to actually talk to companies and stuff like that hey can we park here hey is this a good spot for us and everything like that so Julie wouldn't let you talk to anybody I'm, I'm saying y'all stay but. on the truck <laughs> Julie I'll just stay on the board whatever <laughs> who are you gonna eliminate we're gonna eliminate Dooley yeah that's a right. good option that was, that's a great <laughs> story right. it's a long one but like, so that to me so that's kind of impressive because of the fact that how you guys and i guess the opportunity really sometimes you just kind of have to grab hold of that opportunity to kind of be able to take that next step because you probably it probably would have taken you a little bit longer to get to the idea of the food truck um concept uh, if it wasn't for the show now with that being said now and i know we've kind of talked about this previously on on your podcast but what advice would you give someone who wanted to kind of open up and start a food truck of their own what are like do you have like any tips or tricks or anything that you can think of like hey i really think this is something that you guys should consider before you do this get more money than you need bring your truck to a mechanic and let them give it a once over uh before you purchase the truck <laughs> uh, we we had some hiccups with the truck like we blew a head gasket uh we blew the brakes like this is all like in the first couple months of operating um uh, and Again, get get more money than you think you need. We we did. We yeah. planned ahead. Yeah. We were smart on that one. Um, and in our operating costs, we had a couple of months of backup of like, all right, if if we don't make any sales, we can pay for the truck. If we're all yes. sick or in the hospital or like you know somebody dies, God forbid, we can make this work for six months with nothing. Um, and awesome. I think I think it actually ended up being more than that. We yeah. we kind of we kind of worked out. Luckily, because I'm not going to lie, starting a food truck in the winter, also, maybe not the best plan. Yeah. Um, well, and also the fact that it's the winter up north, because you guys are in Virginia Beach, so it's not like you guys are in Orlando, with like where I'm at, where you guys can be like, hey, let's open a food truck, you could open at any time. We, um, definitely- we're, we're fortunate enough to not be so far north, we're in three feet of snow, but he and I yeah. have both worked on the truck when it was... Like sub freezing in the truck, twenty seven degrees inside the truck. Let me tell you, it sounds like the food truck's gonna be warm. Maybe in the summer, maybe in the summer. Nah, bro. Nah. It, like twenty seven <laughs> degrees at like eight. You o'clock feel every the, bit of that. Eight o'clock in the morning, standing on a metal floor, like your body will tell you that you've made horrible decisions. Okay, so but to wrap up, because again, we're gonna get distracted. <laughs> to wrap up, get more money than you need. It's gonna take way more time than you expect. And, like, do not find an accountant. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, 
no, that three, makes, three that pieces of advice. Good one for, I think that's always a good one, the accountant aspect of it, being able to have someone that can give you an idea of what's deductible, what's not deductible. Um, you mentioned something and from that I was very intrigued by was you basically creating – the relationships with places where to park, um, finding out, you know, kind of figuring that out. I mean, that's always kind of obviously a difficult, uh, must be a difficult task to figure that part out on um, where to park, where to be able to sell. Cause you know, it, it, there's the positive of being mobile, but at the same time you're mobile and you can't, you know, find a place to park and just be anytime set up and go from there. I obey, I do. obey the laws. Yeah. Obey the law. That's definitely a good one to start on. We've had that issue. Uh, with someone arguing about that already, but we're not going to get into that. No. Uh, I will say, um, being I, uh, on the show for... gave us a different outlook at how to book locations. Um, almost every food truck in the area has kind of stuck to a standard. They do catering. They do schools, um, like large public facilities, not just the limited schools, um, hospitals, things like that as well, or they do breweries. Um, I think we came into it with a different mindset, because I think being on the show, we only had two days to, to get set up. You had to find the best location that you could be there for two days or however many hours you had or whatever it was. And um, locally, we partnered up with the Best Buy, which to we, us made perfect sense. To us, but then people are like... No one else in the area had done it. So I think just the mindset that we had from the show gave us a different perspective of how to book gigs. And yes, we are working with breweries. We are working with schools. We yeah, like we're doing all of that, but no one had booked that Best Buy. Like no one had tried. You going, know what I mean? Going into a retail, a retail parking lot, uh, no one, no one thought of. You know, and I, and that comes from us being on the show and dealing like outside of like your normal realm. You got Lowe's down in Florida. Yeah, yeah, we got Lowe's. They got Dominic's. No Dominic's. No Dominic's. No Dominic's you don't know what Dominic's what? is. Mm. What's a Dominic's? Dominic's a is Dominic's? like a, it's it's basically like a sub shop that partnered up with Lowe's. And they're just so it's like, like a trailer that's like permanently parked, parked in, front in front of Lowe's. We're trying to be that. We have like, we have like the hot dog, we have like the hot dog folks that sell hot dogs, at like the Home Depot and stuff like that. Oh, see, Home Depot really, did it down there. Yeah. Well, like, interesting. We, we are actually talking in the Home Depot right now. We're trying to. <laughs> like, I was like, I will park no, a food truck in front of everyone. But that's super smart. I mean, that's super smart, though, to be able to kind of find a place that does, that has their, like, basically owns their private lot, they own their own lot, so they can do whatever you want with them, um, and to be able to kind of go that route. So that's something that's super smart, and I think it's so important to be able to kind of think a little bit different than what else everybody else is doing when you're starting something, um, you know, like, how can you be different? How can you stand out? You know, I think, and that's something that I think is so important to be able to look at. So, yeah, that that's awesome. I will say one thing in... in Every aspect is, you definitely mentioned that we turn this from a passion to a podcast to a business, and even just from passion to business, because we've had multiple businesses along this route, uh, you definitely be passionate about what you're going into business about. Like, if you're going to open your own business, you're going to put in way too much time and money, and you're gonna, like, it, it is all you. There's, there's no one else doing it. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're not going to see it through. Well, isn't, we, isn't there a quote, like, if you... Or if you, you enjoy do, it, then you're not going to work a day in your life. That's fine. I'm just saying if you don't enjoy it, you're going to give up before you finish it. So make sure whatever you're doing, you enjoy doing. Because we have been through some stressful situations, and if if we didn't enjoy this, I don't think that it would be a continuing effort. I, when we are when we operate the truck, um, and you know we're we're putting basically our hearts on. Well, I'll call it a plate because that's just the, the way the, 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 that's just the way it's said. But like, yeah, we're putting it in like a paper boat or we're wrapping it in foil, yeah. uh, <laughs> like it's the cushy foil paper, you know. Um, yeah. But I I enjoy that more. Um, maybe it's because I'm doing it for myself. No, oh, it's for definitely. us. It's definitely. Like as opposed to like you know, we've I've been in the corporate world for a long time, and like you know, you you, you go through the motions. Yeah, you take pride in what you do. But I think, uh, I know, I, I enjoy it more now than I ever have. Because, like, like, I make it, I hand it to somebody, and they eat it, and they tell me how amazing it is. And maybe I'm just vain. That way, like, I need to know how good it is right now. Like, <laughs> I don't, need, I don't you want need, you to yeah. tell me about it a he week from vain. now. We can clarify that right <laughs> now. 
All right. No, you definitely need you need you definitely need that, and you have those moments too. Sometimes when you're having like uh, those crappy days where you're kind of like, what like what the hell did I get myself into? And then you have it's amazing how that you get that you get that justification from someone that tells you like, man, I'm like this is amazing, uh, and then you're like, yeah, like I, I needed that, like I needed to hear that. Um, because I, I totally get it. That's something that, uh, that I think a lot of people go through that sometimes it's really tough. Cause it's, it's not, it's a, you know, you're doing it for yourself. It's something that you're passionate about, but it's also, you know, in many ways, it's like a thankless job, um, you know, that you're doing, it's something that you're, you know, you're, so I totally understand where you're coming from. Cause on my side, I, I have the full-time corporate job mm-hmm. and that's why my daily fresh threads for me is, the, is this passion project where, I, you can tell. And I think when you talk about it, when you're doing things, I think those, that's what people see that they see the genuineness, um, and they see that passion and that love that you have for it. Um, with that being said, based on passion and love, I'm kind of curious on how you guys come up with your menu items. Um, you know, and, and cause I know one of them, obviously playing around, I mean, obviously part playing around with playing, with playing with your food, quote unquote, um, has led to menu items, uh, like the fourth, the 40, 30, 30. Um, so, and things like that. So kind of, I kind of curious, I'm, you know, since we are, I am food related, I want to know, you know, some of that, how all that, like, you know, R and D, um, goes into effect. You As... cover the burger. I will cover the current. Okay. All right. So first off, like our menu items, like just to give you a, a broad spectrum and that, like, we tr- we try to cross... It's a food truck, so we don't yeah. have that much space. So we try to cross-utilize as much as possible. So you'll see the same proteins and things, like, coming up in different ways. That being said, the 40-30-30 burger was... Dennis the Butcher hates it. Yep. Because <laughs> cause we... we because we grind ribeye into it, and like we're not like ribeye scraps. It like, feels no. bad sometimes. I'm not it, gonna lie. Like, <laughs> like we we buy a ribeye loin, and like we cut it up and just straight grind it into some chuck and bacon, and that's the forty thirty thirty. It's forty percent chuck, thirty percent bacon, thirty percent ribeye, and it's delicious. But it's, it does feel a little wrong sometimes when you're just grinding up a ribeye, like, and when you're grinding up like. Seven pounds of bacon, like you know, you're just like shoving it through a grinder. You're like, oh, man, bacon is delicious, and like it almost feels wrong. It, like that, that was that, that. It's like, oh it man. Was, <laughs> we had a burger day though. We did, which was we we definitely we went through styles of cooking. We went through like, is it char broiled? Is it flat top? Is well, it sauté pan? It, it, we, is it baked? Is it fried? A, like we ground a bunch of meat. We did. We we did and different. Then we, Cooked it a bunch. Of, we smoked it. Yep. We we cooked it a bunch of different ways, and we decided that. And we all knew going in that the flat, flat top. the flat top was the way to go with a burger. Like I mean, a charbroil burger is good. You know, BK I think, BK. I we, think the amount still, of fat in our burger requires. It was well, the amount of fat in our burger was setting the grill on fire. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah I was gonna say. I, I was gonna say. I would. It's you, delicious. You talk about flame broiled. I will say though, like. After playing around with food again every Sunday or Monday, we'd get together. We do. We've been doing this for a long time. But once we actually yep. got the truck, um, it definitely became much more of like a, hey, we'd be at the store and we have this whole rule of like if you stare at something for more than five to seven seconds, just put it in the cart. Um, and that's really how Team Fat yeah. Kid like started. Was yeah, like, like, what, what are you I... looking at? It doesn't matter. Just put it in the cart. Like, like we're gonna we're gonna try it. You you thought about it long enough that you stopped. Put it in the cart. This, let's let's see so what the, it is. The truck basically went the same way. We had like a couple of ideas in mind, and then we'd be walking through the store, and it would just be like, "You want to try well, that?" Well, you want to talk about the Philly? I was just thinking it about was, the there little, was never supposed to be a Philly on the truck. Think about the evolution of the Little Debbie. <laughs> Well, that's a great one right there. We started deep fried desserts. Deep fried little Debbies was one of our desserts, and we had like three in mind that we were thinking of deep frying, and. One of the original three didn't work out in the original fashion. We have since fixed the problem, blah, blah, blah. Not going into details, that's long. But the Little Debbie, we started out with three, and now we have figured out, like, we can deep fry, like, eight versions of the Daily Little Debbie. And it's amazing how many of those deep fry Little Delicious Debbies we go through. But the evolution started with, well, let's try one. And that one worked out. And then it was like, well, they're... Biggie, biggie. Just trust us. Make some funnel cake mix. Okay. Put, take 
uh, oatmeal cream pie, a little Debbie oatmeal cream pie. And deep fry it with caramel sauce. Dip it in there, yeah. throw it in a deep fryer, then a little cinnamon sugar and caramel. It's the best thing in the world. Oh, uh, best dude. thing in the world. <laughs> just, just, it's, no, it's not so, a sandwich. I mean, does that count as a sandwich? It's got breading it's around it. Cream sandwich, cream sandwich. It's a cream cookie. <laughs> but it's, but it's, let me oatmeal just... cream pie. Let me, but have you ever done, so I want you to try, and I know we've kind of talked about this, but putting it in an egg roll. We have talked about it. We haven't gotten there yet. Because, like, right now, like, we're trying to, like, we're still new. And we're still trying yeah. to be proficient at what we're doing. Uh, see, most of the time, it's really what do we have on the truck. Like, Jason wrapped some things in uh, flat-topped cheese. So, like, he made, like, the cheese crust. And I then, like, wrapped that. a couple sandwiches yeah, in cheese and crust, rolled, you Like, know? the Philly rolled in yeah. cheese. So, yeah. we've played around that. with that, but unfortunately, like, if you don't eat it immediately, it's just not yeah. the same. Well, so, and in China, I think you're also, Good. Sorry. I was going to say, the, I, I'm assuming then you're also, it's also what makes it difficult is that you're, as you're creating these things, as awesome as they are, you also need to make sure that they're done in a way where they're quick enough and proficient enough for you to be able to serve it. We have yeah. to be able to produce um, so, it. It has to hold up long enough. Like if some again, a lot correct. of our stuff is to go. If somebody takes it home and eats yeah. it 15 minutes later, that outside cheese is just kind of greasy and gross. To be honest, mm-hmm. if you eat it yeah. immediately, it is amazing. If you do not, it is not. And it, I mean, trust me, I wish I could wrap everything in cheese. <laughs> but I mean, our flat top's just not big enough to do that, and like we don't have enough people to do it. Like it's just. The logistics aren't there yet, and we're working on it. So, out of curiosity, since we're talking, we will since we're kind of talking and during the time of the lunch, what is was there like a go to lunch that you guys had um, that you guys would have as a kid, or what's your go to lunch now? Um, now that you have a truck. Oh man! Like when I was a kid, it was always the PB and J go to lunch. Like PB and J with the redneck lettuce, you, you got to throw like the Lay's potato chips on it. <laughs> You got the redneck lettuce. <laughs> yeah, that's what you... on the potato chips. I, li- I like that. Chips. That's yeah. way better. That's way better than my version. I usually call that like a crunch factor. Is what I call that, but I like the redneck lettuce better. I like that. That's good. Redneck lettuce. I, like... I don't know. I see. I see a T-shirt coming. <laughs> I see. Well, I see something. I definitely see a sandwich or something coming with redneck lettuce instead of me calling it chips inside because that's way better. I don't know if I had a, a go-to growing up, and on the truck, I think most of our lunches and or dinners, whatever whatever time we're cooking is is whatever we're experimenting on. Yeah, that uh, is, it's, that it's is. definitely like a, hey, let's try this. We'll cut it in half, see what happens. So, I, there's no go-to. The go-to is the experiment. Just what are we fucking with yeah. today? No, that makes sense. What... What's the, for, I guess one of the big things for me was one of the, and one of the reasons why when I started Deli Fresh Threads, because I mean, I love making sandwiches, but I didn't want to open a restaurant by myself or anything like that was my joke always is, well, my leftovers are my shirts, so they never go bad. What, how do you guys handle that whole aspect of, and I know you guys sell, you know, you guys are constantly now selling on the daily, but how do you guys handle all that? Because trying to figure out, you know, cause I'm also seeing a lot of small businesses that are doing food, um, you know, that they don't they actually don't bring enough so then it's like it's kind of like that that struggle right i mean I, like it's that balance that you guys got to find figure out of like what's w- enough enough material to be able to have me make, make, make profit since you have like a great crowd and then not having enough where you're kind of like oh crap i just lost out i could have been selling for another two hours and it, happens bo- it happens both ways <laughs> yes we've we've had it go both ways um fortunately running out of foods only happened twice um, uh, well, okay. Running out of everything. Running, running out of <laughs> shit. Anyway, uh, but what we, do you got? I got four chickens left. I'll yes. take four chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I, you could say twice in the same night. We refilled and then ran out again. Uh, either way, um, there is definitely a you know how much do we bring factor. Um, we're fortunate enough to live in a, a town that has a, a depot for restaurants, um, and that way we don't have to do as bulk orders, I guess you would say. Like, we don't have to buy cases of ground beef. We can buy a 10-pound log at a time. We don't have to buy um, necessarily, like, restaurant quantities, but we get restaurant pricing, I guess. We, I mean, get, we get restaurant products, but we're able to break it down into smaller portions. 
Um, I mean, you know, Restaurant Depot. I mean, right. yeah. not a sponsor. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Should be. But uh, we were fortunate to live Ooh, close to we're, one. We're there almost every day. Like, yeah. So I, it, can ima- it, I can imagine that. It they does, know who we are. It does make it a lot easier <laughs> to to operate when you can buy smaller quantities and really work off what you need instead of having to worry about, like, I'm going to buy this 80-pound case. What do I do with 60 pounds for the next week or two? Um, yeah. And I mean, we do have storage, but again, you don't, you don't really, you don't really want to use that storage. Like the whole point is to be going through it quickly and continuously. Keep it fresh. Yeah. Um, Keep it deli. Keep it deli fresh. (laughs) Keep it deli fresh. That's good. (laughs) You got me. Now you took my, you took my, my thought out of my head. Um, So that, that's, that's really interesting to be able to kind of go that route and be able to to do that. Um, I think that's. You know, that's always kind of I, I could imagine because right now I'm seeing a lot of uh, pizza folks that are dealing with that where they don't prep enough or, or they don't think they prep enough and then they explode. And then now they're like, well, great. You know, and I, and so it's a good problem to have. Obviously, I'd much rather have you guys be selling out of stuff and figuring out like, oh, I need to bake more than to be like, oh, I, you know, I have all this extra and what do I do now with it? So bake more. That's a great sense. one. We get well, bread fresh. Let me tell you. That's, yeah, a, that's, that was the, that's what I was going to ask you about was because that's the tough part because you guys, that's one thing that you guys do that's different is that you have like your own bread maker that's actually making your own bread for your sandwiches. Yeah, which he, I think is, is, he is amazing and sometimes he hates us. Shout out to Ken, Andy's Bakery. <laughs> Andy's Virginia Bakery. Beach. Like, like what was it? We text him as like, yo, man, I need like 72 rolls tomorrow. He, we, we did ask him, like, do you provide restaurants and, you know, corporate businesses with roles? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you know. And he's like, you know, they probably order, like, two they dozen a, a week. A and we're like, them. yeah, we're going to need, like, 72 on one day. And by, like, Friday, we're going to need another, like, 80. Uh, <laughs> so we've been keeping him busy, which is good. Uh, we, we, yeah. we, we try to give him as much advance warning as possible. But I then actually, sometimes it happens and it's like, yo, man, this is, he's like. We got hit. We're going to need some rolls tomorrow. Uh, I actually think he was just sponsored for his uh, art. Recently. Yeah, he is. Uh, he just is. a shout out to him as well. Okay. Yeah, he he is an artist. Like he actually paints, and he's doing. Like oh wow! A, he got like, a little local segment. Uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't get to see the whole thing, but recently, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. So shout out to Cam. Yeah, but like he does, he's an artist in both forms. Like he makes the bread, and like we just text him like, man, I really need bread, and he's like, I'll see what I can do. Damn it. <laughs> we're always we're always ordering late in the day. He always sends his staff home at like noon, so it's like just him by the time we order, and it's like, yo, we need eighty. Yeah. And he's like, ah, really? Why it's didn't okay. you tell me an hour ago? Yeah, but it's so oh, that soft. has happened. It's so soft when we get it. <laughs> it's okay. Jason sends his bay Dooley to go get it. So <laughs> yeah, last time we last time we picked up bread, we just sent Dooley to get it, and Dooley like went up to the back door and picked up the bread, and by the time he was done, like he was walking away, and he goes. Wait, they did pay for this, right? Like, yeah. yeah, we already paid for it. You're just picking it up. But but I, but I did speak the text, and I was like, my boy Dooley's coming by to pick it up. And it said, my bae Dooley. My bae Dooley is coming by to pick it up. I, I, looked, he's I like, opened up the back door, and he's we, like, we got, uh, we got so a bread are bag. you yeah. Jason's bae? I was like, I guess so. <laughs> we got a bread bag. He's like, your bae, your bae totally came by and picked up the bread. <laughs> <laughs> He I said, he said, he said, you should really not mix business and pleasure, though. It never works out well. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting close to my, uh, my lunch break being over. So I want you guys to have a moment to be able to tell everyone where can they find you? Um, where can they follow you? And at the same time, obviously, if they're in Virginia, where can they eat your food? Oh, right. Jesus. Do we, do, do, we, do, do we just do it? All right. You, do um, you, wait, just, just, I think just the food truck. Just the food truck? Jason. Let me give them the whole spiel. Whole spiel. We're going to make, we're we're gonna gonna make this quick. Give Don't it to worry. me. We're going to make right. this quick. Give it to me. Whole thing. Uh-huh. You can find Team Fat Kid on Facebook at... Team Fat Kid. On Instagram at... Team Fat Kid Nation. On Twitter. At Team Fat Kid 1. On YouTube. Team Fat Kid. And of course, you can find us online at www.teamfatkidnation.com for all of your knife and apparel needs. You can find the food truck on Facebook. Team Fat Kid Food Truck. On Instagram. Team Fat Kid Food Truck. On Twitter. At Fat underscore Truck. And you can call us at 757 757- Four two seven fifteen eighty six. Oh, uh, we're, we're supposed to like. We're yeah. used to music. Like, we have, we're used we to have, music. We have, yeah, you're used to like ending the whole segment. Yeah, that was right that now. was you know. 
That was pretty. That's pretty suave, guys. That's there's there's usually suave. a couple more after that with the whole sign off, but we're just not there yet. Yeah, we were like, uh, this is your sign off, not our sign. Yeah, this is my sign off. This is actually my my actually my first sign off. So it's kind of crazy. Um, so, but no, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to for letting me do this with you guys. Um, Thanks for spending your lunch with us, have- man. For sure, man. I definitely want to be able to have um, do this again and maybe talk. We can talk about some other topics as things come up. But, uh, you know, that's definitely our show for today. I want to thank Team Fat Kid for uh, for definitely spending their time with me and my lunch with me. Um, definitely go check them out. You'll see all the information on um, all the details on there for on all the show notes. You'll see be able to make sure to go follow them. If you like the show, definitely come and check it out. Um, give it a follow. And, of course, if you want to support me, check out Deli Fresh Threads. Dot com and definitely pick up a shirt or buy a sticker. Thank you guys so much. And don't forget, keep eating sandwiches and follow your passion. Talk to you guys later. Clear? Uh, yeah, and I thought about that. I was like, there I should is. seriously eat a sandwich while I'm doing this. But uh, but it was that was kind of one of the big ones where I kind of thought about it too. I was like, I really, I'm like, I really should eat a sandwich while I'm doing this. Like you, I mean, you're you're videoing this, right? <laughs> The sandwich yeah, the so, so even if you just have like a couple of edits, like I, I you don't have to like chew in the microphone or anything. But I just want like a yeah. shot of you it's, just like having a conversation, you like at least with the you know, sandwich. Like put it I just, down. I feel I like I'm gonna eat it. It's lunch with Biggie, and there was it, no sandwich involved. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. It'd been funny as like as you're asking the question. So, so. No. See, I don't Passion, know. Right? I, I don't know if I'm... So you know, I would not be able to do that because my wife has, like, the most sensitive ears. And I forget yeah, what it's called. Yeah. I think a lot ASM, of people... ASM, is that what it's called? ASM or whatever it's, what that, what's it's called? Like, I don't know, but either way. Yeah. I, again, I don't think you need to chew into the microphone. I just feel like you Correct. should, you know, just have a sandwich while they're answering the question. And then you go to, you know... Back, back right. away, back yeah, away. Yeah, just to have a couple of bites. You know, it's lunch with Biggie. If you're not eating your lunch, is it really lunch with Biggie? Like, it's just... Yeah. It's, it's no. a conversation with Biggie. You need, I you need, no, I'm I almost agree. disappointed I didn't have a sandwich. Like we should have had sandwiches. Uh, it's lunch with Biggie. Yeah, like. I should. Uh, I should, and that might be something I work my way into. To this is almost like the hot ones conversation. You know, like I hey, could have a sponsor. Here's a bunch of wings. Eat these while we talk. Here's a sandwich. Eat these while we talk. I would love. I would love to be able to do that. That's like a dream scenario. The hot ones and all that stuff. That's they're pretty awesome. No, they, they, um, they marketed well. No, they do a good job. Are you guys still recording your podcast right now? Uh, yes. Yeah. We paused it for a second. Well, yeah, uh, no, Dooley turned it back on. I think no, right, we're, I mean, we're about is, to pause this it. This is the best part. If I had a team of people where I can actually do this, or I can at least do all this and have like other people with, like, you know what I mean? Like, if I can actually be with part of someone else. Right. Um, I talked to someone who basically offered to like do all that. Like, he's like, hey, you just show up and you can record with your guest. Um, and do all that and I was like yeah it'd be great but I'm like I kind of then feel like I'm relying on someone else and so that was the reason why I was like well let me at least see what I can do when I do this um, and then go from there well I mean like with with like our, like obviously we made Dooley do all the work because he damn it Dooley it was still on the show uh Sorry, she was asking where her chicken was. Uh, <laughs> um, chicken? Like it was Dooley's idea, so we made him operate the soundboard and all that. Like, like this is your idea, dude. Like, you got to do it. Like, I'm just here to talk. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm the am, talent. I'm, I'm the talent, Jamie. Jamie. I'm the talent. I'll show up when you hit record. <laughs> yeah, and that to me, to me, that would be like that would be dream case scenario. But like everything else I do here, it's just me. So I'm like. I'm like, well, let me at least figure this out first and then kind of go from there. Because I, mean, um, I had some, you know, I wanted to have other people be like, co, like I guess, co-hosts um, on it. But I also think that there's right. some folks that I'm that I'm friends with that kind of don't want to, they're not, I don't know if they have the energy to be able to do it. So it's kind of like as much as it would be great, I don't know if they, we'd be able to riff enough where it would be worthwhile. Right. I, and I think you're doing it right, like uh, with your podcast and like, having like keep it 30 minutes like it's not like we're just dumb and we we can talk and listen to ourselves and laugh and like make fun of each other for an hour and, and shit a half. on me you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. I'm right. i mean we could make fun of Dooley for an hour and a half every week <laughs> you won't, you won't hear me late. because my microphone will be off because i'm going to be crying the entire time so we made fun of Dooley 20 seconds into this podcast i think it was a record I think it was five. 
No, no we, it was, we, it was, it was the it was music. Tw- it was 23 seconds in. There's last the one was 43, so y'all yeah. are getting better. I mean, it was 22. you could do a whole segment <laughs> called what. You could do a whole segment called what Dooley does, and then just kind of go there and. St- can you have not give them ideas? <laughs> Dooley, Dooley. It, it would have been. It would. It would have been great. Like when, because Dooley and I used to work together. Um, shit, damn near every day. Don't worry. Now it's, now it's Alex and me. So if we if we ever have the time to go more uh, televised slash YouTube, we've got a whole list of things. Uh, the Dooley Kitchen don'ts. <laughs> oh, he's got the list uh, pulled up. <laughs> is that like a? Is that like a? Is that that's like Instagram Reels right there? Oh, yeah. this, the, it's, Fifteen second uh, videos. Oh, we've got yeah, the we, Dooley don'ts. We've got the make Dooley do it, which is basically making Dooley do things he's never done, like. Here's half directions. Good fucking luck. You can't uh, see me right now, but I'm just. It's kind of like it's kind of like Mikey would eat it, but it's <laughs> make Dooley do it. Yeah, wait. I got a, I got a whole list. Not all of them are all Dooley, but make Dooley do it and Dooley uh, the Dooley Kitchen Donuts are probably two of my favorites involving Dooley. But yeah, no, we 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 I'm got some ideas those on that list. Do not drop your phone into a vat of sauce. Shut yes. up. That is, that is, that's a big Dooley don't. Is that at the bacon uh, in a bacon the bacon cheese sauce? No, 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 no thank no, God, no. Any sauce. No, no, no. This, this is at the job. No, he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> the bacon cheese sauce, I would think, is like probably like one of the most expensive things we make on the truck, and like so the 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 cost per ounce is yeah. probably the highest on on that. Um, like when when we were discussing like on on your podcast, like yeah. things that people need yeah. to know, like they need to do food cost. Well, I hope. And then, and then, well, I hope they know that going of, in. Well, yeah. a lot of people would just open a food truck, and like, like you got to incorporate like your to-go cost. Like, what does the bag cost? What does the fork and knife cost? Like, what is what is like the actual packaging that you're sending it out in cost? And you need to incorporate that into like your whole business plan because it it like that'll screw people in the end. Like, oh, I didn't account yeah. for that cost, and like that's when Alice is saying like you need to like. You need more money than you think. Like whatever, Insurance, whatever, whatever. You need, yeah, you need like, like those those bills. Like you don't think about like oh, the fire marshal wants to be paid, the health inspector wants to be paid, like the city wants to be paid. Like depending everybody. depending on the city, uh, they all got paid. taxations are different in different cities. And what yeah. I mean by that are some people do. Uh, it's like taxation and trust. Essentially, you say I think I'm going to make this much money, and they say okay. At the end of the year, you owe us that much money. But now, they, certain mm. cities say uh, there's no taxation and trust. So when you go to get your license, you have to say, I think I'm going to make this much money this year. And then you pay that tax up front. So if you think you're going to make $5,000 in taxes that year, you pay $5,000 to get licensed in that city. Now, that's probably few and far between, but there is a yeah. city here that does not do bond taxation or whatever Tax, it's called. The trust. The trust. Taxation and trust. I, I'm not exactly sure the wording, but again, so if we want to get licensed in that city, we have to pay all of the taxes for that year up front before we can start so, selling. we're in Virginia Beach, obviously, and Virginia Beach, basically, we collect tax. We hold that tax. It's called the trust, and we hold the tax, and when they ask for it, we pay them the tax. Like, we hold it. Norfolk... I'm, Oh, wants their money up front. They like, want the money up front. Like, I don't know how much I'm going to make. So if you make less, <laughs> they refund you. If you make more, you give them more money. But again, if you assume I'm going to make $30,000, you have to pay the taxes yeah. for $30,000 worth of sales. Hey, because, you know, everyone has that money in your, you know, yeah. just lying around. Because, I, because I've obviously already made it since I've, I've yeah. been out there selling. Uh, of course. Well, Biggie... We love you. Thank you for having us on your podcast. And no, thank man. You, thank, thank you. you. For, thank you for allowing us to record you on our I love how you Oh, dude. Table. My pleasure. What I may do is, and if you don't mind, I may We're send you... We're not going to release this until you release yours. No, 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 no. I know that one. I know that one. I'm going to send you guys... I may send you guys... I'm thinking of doing... And you tell me what you're thinking, your thoughts are on this. Since, um, since I actually... My goal is to be able to have different folks than, and obviously I want to have some sandwich talk in it. One of my topics that I was, that uh, I was playing around with was pause, using pause, a, pause, Dooley, cut us off. Oh, no one hit the button. Well, I feel like we just did this, but we're going to do it again. <laughs> Hold on, I got to hit the button. It's still going for, <laughs> oh, oh man, it's asking for a code. Hold on. Oh, code. Do you not know the code to your phone? Dude, it was all the way on the other side of the table. Can we get some volume? 
I there like it that. is. Thank you, Dooley. Yes. As always, guys, thank you for listening to Team Fat Kid Choose the Fat. You can Wait. find us on Facebook at Team Fat Kid. On Instagram at Team Fat Kid Nation. On Twitter at Team Fat Kid One. On YouTube. Team Fat Kid. <laughs> As always, you can find us at www.teamfatkidnation.com for all your knife and apparel needs. Don't forget to check out the food truck on Facebook at Team Fat Kid Food Truck. Good job, Dooley. Mm-hmm. On Wrong Instagram. <laughs> Team Fat Kid Food Truck. <laughs> on Twitter at Fat underscore Truck. <laughs> Don't forget, stay hungry. <laughs> Be creative. And don't forget to sharpen your knives. Praise the Lord. We're really good at this. So good at this. I know. Thank you, Biggie. <laughs>